Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to our first Allegheny County meeting for the 2023 Long Range Plan Update. Thank you for being here. Rhonda, are we recording? Yes, we are. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Dom DeAndrea, and I am SBC's Transportation Planning Director. I would like to acknowledge County Executive Rich Fitzgerald and the other SBC commissioners and Allegheny County staff and thank them for their continuing support in the development of the Long Range Plan and the Transportation Improvement Plan. Uh, we, we are here to talk today about future investments in our region and specifically Allegheny County and provide an update on where we are in the development of the Long Range Plan. Uh, we update the 25 year long range plan every four years. The current transportation improvement plan or the TIP, which represents the first four years of the long range plan invests nearly $2.8 billion worth of highway and transit projects into Allegheny County. So uh, next, okay, you're already there. Next slide. All right, uh, our presentation tonight, uh, you know, we are uh, going to talk about the, the uh, development schedule. The, the, the presentation will cover many of the key aspects of the long range plan development, such as schedule, public involvement, and the review of the plans, policies, and strategies. Then we will cover the transportation planning and long range transportation uh, plan project list development, including a look at current TIP funding and projects advancing from the long range plan into the tip. Um, some of the listed current long range plan projects and some projects under consideration for listing in the outer years of our updated long range plan. Then we'll shift gears a little to discuss the new bipartisan infrastructure law, some of the discretionary programs that have come out of it and SPC's approach to those opportunities. We'll have a quick update on broadband strategy and wrap it up with uh, SPC economic development uh, initiatives and efforts. Next slide. So uh, our, our long range plan vision has been uh, reviewed by, our, by the commissioners on our policy committee and uh, it's been updated. We're gonna present that in a few seconds here. Um, we have already had work group meetings, which involved the county uh, planners and PennDOT planners. Uh, we've, we've begun those, and uh, Ryan Gordon of our staff is going to talk a little bit about that. So right now we are having our public participation, uh, public participation panel meetings. Um, we this is, I believe, the fifth or sixth one. We have a few more to go. We're having one in each county. Um, uh, a parallel effort is uh, our transit staff is meeting with transit operators. Um, so the, the, these initial meetings are to really gather uh, an updated long range plan project list. We hope to have that together by March and go to our uh, transportation technical committee and our transit operating operations committee for approval. And then we will do some analysis of the of that comprehensive list. Uh, we have to do an environmental justice analysis to make sure that the uh, impacts of those projects, as well as the benefits of those projects, are distributed equitably. Um, and we also will conduct an air quality conformity uh, in terms of federal regulations, making sure that our plan. Uh, conforms with uh, federal air quality standards. And then we'll start assembling the document in, in the March, April timeframe. And, and then we'll come back out and we'll have another meeting um, uh, that you'll all, you'll all be invited to during the 30 day public comment period and really present a draft of the plan for, for your comment and your feedback again. And, uh, and then our goal is to get adoption at our commission meeting of the updated long range plan in June of next year. Next slide. 
So the vision, uh, our long range plan establishes the visions, goals and strategies for the region and also lays out actions of potential implementation partners to advance the goals and strategies to ultimately achieve this vision. The regional vision is a world-class safe, well-maintained and connected multimodal transportation system that provides mobility for all, empowers resilient and sustainable communities and supports a globally competitive economy. So this vision statement was a little different in our previous plan. As I said, um, our uh, some of uh, members of our commission, as well as our policy board, as well as the county um, planning directors have reviewed the previous vision statement, and and this has been this is represents a, a little bit of a tweak to that. Um, so to achieve this vision, the long range plan includes a list of projects currently within fiscal capacity and projects beyond fiscal capacity, meaning based on the funding projections, we can't afford some of the projects that are proposed. And I think Ryan Gorn's gonna get into that a little bit later. Uh, that is one of the reasons that we want your feedback. So I'm gonna turn it over to Rhonda Craig, who's going to go over a polling exercise with you. Rhonda? Um, as Don mentioned, um, we've had uh, minor updates to the long range plan. So um, the vision and also the goals and the um, strategies are all um, listed over to the right uh, on the screen. And so what we wanted to ask you to do is to take a quick poll. Um, there's two uh, poll questions. Um, the first one, um, which I'll show in a minute, is that we wanted you to vote um, regarding what you feel is the most urgent goal for the region to address in a long range plan. And the goals are in the orange to the right, but, and they're, all, or they're also listed in the poll question. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the poll now. Can everybody see it? Yes, I see it. Thank you. See some people are still putting their answers in. About 14 seconds left. About five seconds. Okay, I'll go ahead and show everybody the results. Can everybody see the results? Yes. All right, and the second uh, polling question. So I wanted to see what you felt was most urgent when it comes to the strategies for the region to address in the long range plan. And here you can pick more than one if you choose. Rhonda, is there a maximum we can pick? Um, I don't believe so, but it, we're looking maybe even like your top five, if you could do that. There's about 20 seconds left.
about two, one. Okay. I'll just show everyone the results. Everybody sees them. Thank you um, for taking the poll. Um, so uh, SPC has various ways that um, it engages uh, with the region. We have numerous committees. Um, also, you can always email us at comments at spcregion.org or you can email me at rcraig at spcregion.org. Um, we have in person and also virtual public participation meetings. Um, you can always check out the tip and the long range plan at spcregion.org. And you can follow us on social media such as Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, or LinkedIn. Um, comments and feedback um, are valued and encouraged, and all questions and comments are processed here at the SPC. Um, this is round one, as Dominic had mentioned, um, with uh, for uh, public comp or co uh, public meetings, I'm sorry, um, and I'll be reaching out probably April to schedule um, a formal public comment uh, or another public uh, participation meeting for May and um, June. I'm going to hand it over to Ryan now. Thanks, Rhonda. I'm going to go over some of the process related slides of how we. Um, developed a long range transportation plan project list and where we are in that process and some sample projects from Allegheny County. So as Dom kind of covered before on the milestones, you know, we're, we're constantly in a transportation planning process and going through various steps in a cycle that produces the transportation improvement program every two years and produces a new long range transportation plan every four years. So federal regs require uh, SBC to develop and update that LRTP every four years. And so we are currently working to produce the long range transportation plan project list and document and anticipating public review in, in May with an adoption date of June 26, 2023. Next slide, please. So this diagram depicts the general process for the development of the LRTP and the project list. You'll notice that public involvement really does bookend this process. Um, we're, we're currently working through that top row of, of activities and tasks. We're currently going out to brief each county in open meetings, such as the one that we're having tonight as kind of the start of our public involvement. Um, at the end, we'll have the public comment period in May that, that both Rhonda and Dominic talked about. So we work through um, the process to develop the project list through our three LRTP development work groups. So in Allegheny County, this includes SPC staff, PennDOT District 11 staff, um, county staff, city of Pittsburgh staff, and staffing from our three uh, transportation management areas. So we utilize this work group uh, to reviewing our current conditions of of our transportation network and our current conditions and the status of the performance measures. And we develop a long range plan transportation needs and candidate projects in conjunction with that work group. SPC will then conduct screening and a consistency criteria analysis to review the candidate projects and provide input back to the work group. So then the LRTP investment plan is developed, and this is really um, our identification of future transportation revenues, and we create a investment plan in collaboration with PennDOT and the other LRTP workgroup members. This is a very conservative 
identification of what's reasonably expected to be available in terms of uh, future transportation revenue. Then we will have between nine and 12 work group meetings throughout the region. That's three or four probably in, in the Allegheny County District 11 work group. And we'll come to a consensus on, on the LRTP draft project list. And from there, we develop, uh, we do two analyses that are required. The environmental justice analysis and the air quality conformity analysis. Once we get done conducting that, it'll be late spring and we'll be conducting our formal comment period in May. Next slide, please. So the long range plan is obviously a long term view of transportation investments in the SPC region. This particular plan is going to take us out to 2050. And within this time frame, like I said, we developed an estimate of, of revenue that's expected to be available. And then we look at projects um, that we can put against that revenue. In other words, the plan cannot exceed the amount that's identified in our investment plan. So that's what's referred to as fiscal constraint. The time frame of the LRTP is broken down into three stages and funds are assigned to each stage. In stage one, this is also known as the TIP years. Um, the TIP is currently years 2023 through 2026. In this time frame, we have a very detailed program. Uh, we have all the projects listed um, by phase, by fund type, by amounts. It's very detailed. In fact, we actively manage it and make um, adjustments, revisions to it monthly. Stage two is really the next eight years after the end of the current tip. So that takes us to years 2027 through 2034. In this stage, we include um, the total remaining on projects that may have started in the tip years, and then the total costs of projects that may be started in these years. So this stage does not include minor projects. It does include what we call investment category line items. Um, these are chunks of money that are assigned to investments such as bridges on the NHS or preservation of roadway um, in different areas and different, different uh, levels. So, what we really do then is look at stage three. In stage three, this is largely conceptual. Um, projects are only really our large projects are identified. It's larger amounts of funding. Um, often the descriptions of the projects may be somewhat con conceptual and the project estimates are just you know early conceptual estimates. Um, and we do show a lot of funding residing in these investment category line items. So we have a long time period here that we're looking at. We update the tip every two years and we calibrate the long range plan to that tip every two years. And so we have a constantly evolving program. So keep in mind that these years represent um, 13 tip updates. So um, it's a long time. It's a lot of years looking into the future. And keep in mind that most of our newer candidate projects that we're going to be placing on a tip, they'll be in in the third stage, maybe the second, but mostly the third stage. Next slide, please. So just wanted to go back and give everybody an idea of the revenue that we have gotten on our tips in, in the recent past. And you can see there was a downward trajectory in that really going back to about 2015. Now, with the passage of the bipartisan IIJA law, the funding that we've received in that federal act has really taken us up back to about 2019 tip levels in terms of our current tip. Next slide, please. 
Um, here you can see the current tip investments in the entire region. Um, and just making the point that our largest investment is in bridges and that has been true over the last few tips and continues to be true. Um, and you'll see in a, in a slide or two, um, the emphasis coming from the feds in this in this bridge category as well. Next slide, please. So as Don mentioned and I mentioned, the passage of the IIJA or the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law has provided additional federal funding to the region. A few highlights are really, you know, a new federal bridge investment program. Um, and that, that, that amounted to over $211 million um, in funding for bridges in the region. Also, it increased our, what's called our off system bridges. Um, those are bridges that are kind of on the lower level networks, but we did get increased some increased funding for that. And we also got an increase in our transportation alternatives program. And so at the same time, um, our state funds were slightly down um, for the 2023 tip, and that was largely based on you know residual impacts from COVID and the impact on vehicle miles traveled uh, and and you know receipts from the gas tax at the, tax at the state level. Next slide, please. So as you can see, um, there are a lot of kind of sources and resources for candidate project development. And they can come from a variety of sources that are listed here. Um, the counties, the city, PennDOT districts, and the public, they all provide input uh, on sources for you know, candidate projects, projects that are out there, needs that are out there. So all of the candidate projects that we get in, uh, we review for consistency with our long range plan strategies our federal and state transportation planning factors, and our federal performance measures. So SPC will conduct that screening and that uh, kind of consistency analysis, and then we'll share the results with our LRTP work group that I mentioned a couple of slides back. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so what are some of the big focus areas for investment in a long range plan? And you can see some of them listed here. I did mention, you know, the uh, emphasis on bridges with, especially with the influx of new federal funding. Um, you could you could see that kind of the asset, what we call asset management on the bridges and roadways, along with safety, continue to be, you know, the key focus for what we're investing in in the region. Um, you know, we still expect to have a significant number of bridges, both. Um, on our highest level network called the NHS and, and our lower level networks. We expect to have a lot of bridges listed in the long range plan. We also um, focus on transit and, and the transit plans put out by, by the PRT. Um, those, those are a big uh, focus area on the transit side of the plan development. And then Lastly, we still look at um, projects that will include will improve efficiency and the operations of the of the transportation network, um, and also um, you know ped bike projects, multimodal projects that um, result in cleaner air quality. Those are all continue to, to, to be focus areas for investment. Um, the last two are really local bridges. Um, we always have had local bridges on, on the long range plan, um, both, both as line items and individually listed uh, larger projects. Um, and then the last thing there is landslides, um, both in our, in our southern tier counties from Allegheny down, we've, we've often included uh, line items for landslide remediation in, in the long range plan. Next slide, please. So these next couple of slides, I'm just gonna go through pretty quickly. Um, they're just um, a snapshot of, of, of a couple of sample projects in, in Allegheny County and then in the city. And you can see some projects uh, in that top grouping. That's some examples of projects that had started out on the long range plan and over the last tip or two have 
have moved from stage two of the long range plan in, into the, the TIF itself. Um, you can see there the second grouping are a sample of projects that are on the current long range transportation plan project list. Um, we would on the inside refer to that as carryover. That means projects that are listed on the on the program uh, uh, now and will remain on the long range plan uh, as we as we do the update. Next slide, please. And then. Um, we have a lot of candidate projects. I only plucked out six of them here just as a sampling um, of, of kind of the types of projects that are in consideration. We have consideration of projects in all the investment categories that I talked about above. Uh, you know, bridges are huge, roadway, safety, efficiency and operations. Um, we also have uh, line items that represent our, our bed head bike funding and our, and our, and our CMAC clean air funding. So we'll continue to show those in, in the long range plan. Uh, next slide, please. Here, I just wanted to zoom in on Pittsburgh just to demonstrate the same thing is occurring. You know, projects are being identified uh, in the outer years um, for the long range plan. And as, as time goes by, they move into from stage two of the long range plan into, into the tip years. And there's an example of, of quite a few bridges there um, and, and some Pittsburgh in, in Pittsburgh and some Pittsburgh project there that um, have, have really advanced in, into the tip years. And then the second grouping is really a sample of projects that are on, you know, the current long range transportation plan. Like I said, those are carryover. Those are projects that are going to remain on there. I will say, I will note that some of these projects may have some pre-construction phases in the tip, but then have their construction phases uh, out in stage two of the long range plan. So some of these may straddle the tip uh, a little bit and the long range plan. Um, if we have significant money in construction, we're still showing them in stage two of the long range plan, even though some early work may have already um, slid into the tip. And I will note, you know, we'll have significant um, amounts of reserve funding for for the category of our pedestrian and bicycle projects and some of our multimodal projects. We do select those um, in, in two and four year increments uh, with our with our competitive programs. Um, next slide, please. And then here, same thing, just a little bit of a sampling of some of the projects that are under consideration. You know, we're just getting underway here with looking at candidate projects. And we'll still have two to three more meetings of our work group to sort through all this um, and come to consensus on, on, on projects in, in each of the stages. So just a sampling there. Um, next slide, please. So the long range transportation plan also has a strong transit component. Um, and here's a list of, of some of the current long range transportation plan transit projects in Allegheny County. Uh, these are all you know, Pittsburgh Regional Transit um, funding areas. Uh, this will give you an idea of the different project types that they take on. And this is what's currently shown in stage two of the LRTP. Next slide, please. Um, these are proposed projects that are under consideration in the transit realm. Now, the key point here is that uh, PRT or Pittsburgh Regional Transit has recently um, got done with their 25-year um, uh, long-range transit plan, which is called Next Transit, and it's really doing the same thing at, at just a transit level in Allegheny County, where it's designed to take a comprehensive look at investments going into those years and using. Um, Using that as a decision making for planning, designing, building, operating, managing the, tr the overall transit network. Um, and there's a, a range of different uh, projects listed in there. SPC planners will be, you know, transit planners will be meeting with PRT planners to integrate, you know, the key elements of that 25 year plan into the SPC 
portion of the long range transportation plan that's that, that's the transit portion. So bottom line um, that our transit planners are actively working with each of our transit operators in all of our counties um, and you know Allegheny County and PRT is is no different a lot of coordination going on there and we'll continue as they develop the listing of projects that's going to show up uh, on the transit list so hey Ryan uh, I'll, I'll put the, yeah go ahead I'll put the, uh, link to the, the link to the link to the next transit plan is in the chat uh, and it's next oh, transit, the, the the address is next next transit all one word yeah as you see it's spelled there next transit dot network uh, and put the link to that in the in the chat. And uh, so several of the planning projects for these uh, for these transit projects have have already been moved onto the onto the tip, uh, onto the current tip. So this stuff is they are off to the races on this stuff. Yeah, thanks for chiming in, Dave. Anything I missed or misrepresented that you want to clean up? No, that's it. Um, yeah, the uh, uh, I'll just point out that they have their top ten projects, but the on the next transit, but Project Zero is a, a major facility project that is going to be a, a really big deal, uh, a major major deal. Basically, building a new garage, a new a new uh, transit division um, from scratch. It's going to be a, a big a big job, and they can't do any of the other expansions until they have enough uh, facility. Uh, to to do that, so we'll be get, they'll be getting started with that, and we'll, SBC will be here to help them out. Thank you, Dave. Thanks for that input there. <clears throat> um, just a couple more slides before I turn it back over to Dom. Um, with interstate, um, we will have some interstate uh, listed in the in the long range transportation plan. The interstate is really managed out of central office, Harrisburg, and those projects are, are on the long range 12-year uh, uh, interstate program is, is really managed out of central office PennDOT. But we'll have a listing of the projects that are in our region. Um, and we'll also have a list of, of, of needs on the interstate as well. Um, you can see here for just the, the TYP, um, big investments in both 79 and in um, the Parkway I-376. So um, we'll, we'll be showing those in the long range plan along with um, the needs, uh, the unfunded needs that, that are on the interstate network in the region. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide is just, um, just some other other elements of the long range plan um, that we conduct and that would include we do a population and employment forecast for the future. Uh, we also do a whole entire chapter on transportation performance management, which is really um, talking about the projects that we have on our on our LRTP and how they are addressing the federal performance measures and to what extent. Um, we also uh, produce an air quality conformity report, um, which looks at the impact, the air quality of, of the long range plan. We also do an environmental justice analysis and, and do a whole documentation in that area. We also do an environmental inventory and we do an, an analysis of the impacts of the long range plan projects on the environmental inventory. And then we also conduct a lot of agency consultations, um, predominantly, um, you know, with environmental agencies that are um, have jurisdiction over those resources identified in the environmental inventory, and then also partnering agencies and and nearby um, nearby planning agencies. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Um, submitting feedback, Rhonda talked about this a lot at the top. There's her contact information and the um, place where you can submit any comments at any time at comment, comments at spcregion.org. Um, Rhonda, is there anything you want to say on that one? You covered it well. Thanks. We encourage you on to uh, make comments. Thank you. Okay. 
Uh, next slide, please. And I'm going to turn it back over to Dom. We're going to shift gears a little bit to um, <clears throat> discussing some of the bill discretionary program activity that that we've been doing and in some of our broadband work. So um, kicking it back to you, Dom. Thanks. Thanks, Ryan. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, uh, before I move on to this portion of the presentation, I just want to remind everybody, if you have a question, please, please put it in the chat. Uh, we have uh, SPC staff here, as well as uh, want to acknowledge that we also have staff from PennDOT District 11. So if there are, is a detailed question you have about any of the projects that Ryan just showed you, uh, we have uh, Assistant District Executive Doug Sealy here, as well as uh, staff from the uh, Planning and Programming Unit at uh, PennDOT District 11. So uh, just, just wanted to uh, put that in there. If you have a question, please place it in the chat. So uh, next slide. <clears throat> so nearly a year ago, um, Congress passed and the president signed into law the $1.2 trillion bipartisan infrastructure law. And with previous, as with previous infrastructure bills, the legislation included a comprehensive and long-term surface transportation reauthorization. However, this time around, this legislation also addressed other infrastructure needs of our nation and, and included appropriating numerous energy-related programs from grants to modernize our electric grid or establishing pilot programs for new forms of energy like hydrogen and the capturing of carbon. Uh, of the over 400 programs within the bipartisan infrastructure law, over half of them are relevant to SPC and our region. Uh, another significant change was the sharp increase in the number of new discretionary and competitive funding programs. So in response to those new opportunities, our commissioners have asked staff to play a more leading role in applying for them to ensure our region is receiving its fair share of funding. And that's what we've been working on, uh, you know, a good, a good portion of this year. Um, uh, as the new programs are announced, we come through the guidance and requirements to determine if regional applications are worth considering or if there are, if there are additional partners that we can support in, in helping in their own applications. Um, and I'll go through some of the applications that we have submitted uh, in the past few months. Uh, finally, we did, I uh, wanted to mention, we've noticed that every funding notice from this administration has some common themes, uh, equity, resiliency, and workforce development and demands. So we are concentrating on hitting those themes in our applications. Next slide. So I'll go through some of the things we've been working on in the past few months. Um, I'll give you know, uh, you know some moderate details here. Um, we applied to the Multimodal Project Discretionary Grant Program for the Eastern Pittsburgh Multimodal Corridor Project on behalf of the region. That consists of improvements to the Parkway East and the and the East Busway. Uh, you you heard Ryan mention that uh, the Parkway East was was in or in the current long range plan. You know, we're trying to find money for these projects. So this was a 128 million joint request from SPC working with our partners at PennDOT and uh, Pittsburgh Regional Transit um, for over $213 million in improvements. And those improvements include uh, in terms of the Parkway East technological upgrades for better eff efficiency, including incident, incident management and response like dynamic message boards, variable speed limit systems, wrong way vehicle detection and cue warnings, uh, related signal improvements along Penn Avenue and South Braddock Avenue, flood mitigation, uh, the I-376 uh, westbound portion that folks affectionately call the bathtub when we get those heavy rains and it floods. So uh, part of that money would go toward flood mitigation of that section. 
And we also have sidewalks and pedestrian improvements as part of that application for Business Route uh, 22. For the East Busway, the application includes a new ramp to the busway from I-376 and some state of good repair items like paving, drainage, slope stabilization, retaining walls, and uh, rehabilitation of bridges along the East Busway. The application also includes battery electric buses and charging infrastructure. So uh, we, we haven't heard anything on that application. We have been asked for additional information, which we think is a good sign. So stay tuned on that one. Um, we also applied to the bridge investment program with a $73 million application. That included replacement or rehabilitation of eight locally owned bridges in our region that are, are in poor condition. It included two city, it included five bridges within Allegheny County, two of them city of Pittsburgh owned bridges, Charles Anderson Bridge and, Swin, and Swin, Swinburne Bridge, and three Allegheny County bridges, Kenmore Avenue Ramp in Rankin, Patton Street Bridge in Wilmerding, and McLaren Run in Findlay Township. Those are three uh, county owned bridges. We hope to hear about a decision on our application very soon. We'll be looking for local bridge candidates for next year's round as well. Many of the, all of these discretionary funding applications um, are gonna come out every year for the next uh, five years. So we need to be prepared for good candidates. And uh, we still have bridge needs uh, as 20% of locally owned bridges in Allegheny County are in poor condition. Um, next slide. We also applied for the Safe Streets and Roads for All program, a $41 million request. Um, it included implementing 29 projects and uh, on corridors and main streets with a demonstrated need for safety improvements. It also included putting together a municipal planning guide for safer main streets. Uh, we reached out to member counties and transit providers to solicit project needs and ideas from across the region. The Allegheny County portion of that application was about half, about 21 million, and included uh, a proposal for Safe Routes to School program for disadvantaged neighborhoods in the city of Pittsburgh, which included systematic safety improvements for routes near 20 schools in disadvantaged neighborhoods. Um, Liberty Avenue Main Street safety improvements for the portion in the Bloomfield neighborhood. Uh, State Route 8 corridor safety improvements through Hampton Township and transit and pedestrian safety improvements at five uh, PRT stations along busways and light rail lines. We also made an application to the NTIA uh, enabling middle mile broadband grant program. So in partnership with DQE Communications, um, you know, looking at uh, broadband needs and the lack of broadband access throughout our region, we put together a proposal, uh, as I said, in partnership with DQE uh, to construct nearly 170 new miles of fiber cable within proximity of about 16,000 homes and 117 community organizations to reach over 37 people who, who are having difficulties with broadband access. So uh, we're still waiting to hear from that. On that one, uh, we should hear sometime in March of next year. One of the routes is within Allegheny County. It does touch, touch into Allegheny County, and it's uh, a route that uh, starts in Allegheny at Finley Township and, and heads into Washington County. <clears throat> next slide. So just again, with uh, with broadband, you know, the need for high speed internet co connectivity is greater now than ever before. You know, the emergence of COVID-19 virus has really forced us to rethink the way critical services such as education and healthcare are delivered. And uh, during the development of the SBC's long range plan, uh, pr the previous long range plan, the provision of broadband to underserved and unserved uh, areas emerged as one of the region's leading needs. 
Um, high, in our view, high speed connectivity should be viewed as an essential form of transportation in the 21st century. So this, you know, the plan, the, the broadband plan that we put together, and it is, it's available on our homepage of our website, uh, examines the current true state of the region's broadband connectivity in relation to the region's demographic and socioeconomic composition to ensure that the recommendations help to equitably serve the region's most vulnerable populations who are unserved or underserved by current connectivity. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Jen Lasser, who's going to chat about um, economic development activities and an update on, on those activities. Jen? Great. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Jen Lasser. I'm Director of Workforce and Economic Development with SPC, and this is my um, first time with the Long Range Plan Update, so excited to tell you a little bit more about this side of the house, if you will. Next slide. So um, not sure if you know this, but in, in case you didn't, this section, um, we, in addition to being a metropolitan planning organization, uh, the economic development side of the house is a local development district to economic development district. And so we're responsible for the creation, update, and submission of our SEDS plan. Um, and what we actually did in 2019 is we combined our SEDS and long range plan to create smart moves. And so what is slightly different about the local development district and economic development district side of SPC is that instead of representing 10 counties, we represent nine counties. So um, Lawrence County actually falls into the local development district just north of us. And so very similar, um, you know, our, we strive to plan transportation solutions, build a competitive economy, manage environmental resources. And again, that ultimate end game of a world class infrastructure, healthy, livable communities. And so um, why this is important for, for kind of both sides is that SEDS and long range plan alignment is usually required by most of your grants with any tie to economic or workforce development focus. And, um, you know, more importantly, our workforce, the economic development team, we have a strong tie to our small business community, our nonprofits and government organizations. And we really work hard to enhance the regional competitiveness of southwestern Pennsylvania. Next slide. So some of the services um, under the workforce and economic development side is again, that SEDS planning, but we're also your regional liaison to several state and federal agencies, such as ARC, EDA, and the Department of Community and Economic Development. And so one of the things that we focus on is stakeholder engagement and convening. We also do small business support through our Partnerships for Regional Economic Performance Program, which is also called PREP, and that is through DCED, and that includes program administration. We have a large network of small business development centers, economic development organizations, chambers, workforce investment boards, et cetera, and we have folks in-house here at SPC that work with businesses who may want to start exporting their projects um, or products overseas. We have small business lending we have procurement and government assistance. So if you have a small business who maybe wants to start selling their um, services or, or items to the government marketplace, we have somebody that can walk you through that. Um, we have a very, very strong focus and team here, and we want to make sure that our small businesses are, are well supported. And if it's not SPC that can help, we want to connect them to the resource in the community that can. And so we also do um, workforce planning, economic analysis, employment forecasting, and, and additional data. If you're not sure, ask us. We are hopefully the people to help. And um, one area that has significantly grown over the last two years is our grant administration and technical assistance, specifically under ARC and EDA. Next slide. And when I talked about the partnerships for regional economic performance, I wanted to kind of show you what that performance looks like and what this network of nine county um, support system looks like. So we had in 21-22 over 170 workshops held with over 3,500 attendees. We helped over 1,700 new clients with over 3,000 counseling sessions. Um, I'm sorry, 3,000 clients were counseled with over 14,000 counseling sessions. Over 130 small business loans were closed in the region. Over 50 million in increased sales. We had 560 jobs created and 2,100 jobs retained. 
and over 150 businesses were started. So again, we're working to try to keep businesses here in Southwestern Pennsylvania, create new rooted businesses so that they stay so that we have a great place for visitors to visit and our residents to, to reside. Next slide. So as I had mentioned, um, some grant support. So being an economic development district, one of the areas is that we provide technical assistance through economic development grants um, through EDA. And so we actually had over 30 applicants over the last year with over 200 million in grant requests. And that was mainly through ARPA. And so as you know, we were um, a Build Back Better grant applicant here regionally and, and were awarded um, over $60 million for a grant in automation and robotics. Um, we had a lot of other projects, everything from water, sewage, um, tourism. Again, we worked hard with our, um, our regional partners and stakeholders to, to help with grant applications. And then under the ARC, which is Appalachian Regional Commission, we had 28 applicants with over 14 million in grant requests. And again, these are everything from workforce development projects, water, sewage, um, training, entrepreneurship. And finally, we also were able to assist on um, two applications to the National Science Foundation providing technical assistance for projects totaling over 100 million. So what this really looks like is that this is a team that's working really hard and provided over $300 million in project related technical support to our regional applicants, which are your municipalities, your counties, your educational entities, your nonprofits in 21, 22. So if you have um, any partners, especially on the nonprofit municipality side, local government, um, and, and there's some grants that you might be interested in, let's have a conversation. We can see how we can help, how we can connect to those resources and hopefully bring additional resources here to Southwestern Pennsylvania. Any questions? And uh, next slide. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Jen. Um, with that, I think uh, we'll, We'll hit the chat box here to see what uh, what kind of questions okay. we have, Shannon. Thank you, Dom. We do have some questions and comments here. Um, just in case, so everybody saw it, Dave Totten did post in the chat a link to um, PRT's Next Transit Long Range Plan, so you can access it through there. And for the questions, uh, we have a question from Amanda, Amanda Settlemayer. Would PennDOT consider making an investment to bury utilities when reconstructing state roads like Route 22? Well, I can start that off and, and I guess, you know, burying utilities is not an inexpensive proposition. I know PennDOT, I guess it depends on the location. I, I can't speak to Route 22, but I know that PennDOT ha in, in past projects has buried some utilities. Uh, I'm going to, you know, but th th that's not an inexpensive proposition. Um, uh, Doug, do you want to address any of that? Sure. Yeah, I can, I can. Can you hear? Can everybody hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Yeah. Um, I, I guess uh, a short answer would would be no. Uh, um, there there may have been situations where. The utility companies have gone underground in certain situations, but um, typically, Pendod is not going to make that investment to to put. I'm assuming you're talking about telephone poles, overhead utilities, uh, to bury that just to eliminate obstructions adjacent to the roadway. Uh, in my experience, we have not traditionally done that. That Dom's point. That would be a very big investment. Uh, take away a lot of the dollars for the actual roadway or bridge improvements themselves. Um, I think if the utility companies uh, were inclined to do that, uh, we would definitely coordinate with them as part of our project to to try to incorporate that work somehow into the project. Um, I know with every project that that we we design and, and develop in the construction, uh, we coordinate with the utilities, the overhead utilities, the underground utilities, and look for um, any opportunity that they they have to, to improve their systems or to replace them. Because um, the last thing we would want to do is reconstruct a roadway or re resurface a roadway. And then a year later, uh, utility companies out there ripping it up to replace something or to, to make improvements to their 
to their lines or their systems. So um, we do coordinate all of our work with the utility companies, but um, I guess I would say it would be a, a huge investment to try to bury um, utility poles and, and overhead lines along a corridor that we would be working on. So I get, like I said, short answer is likely no, but um, again, we do coordinate with the utilities with all of our projects. Okay, we have a question from Chris Sandvig. In the corridors identified in Next Transit, how are SPC, PennDOT, and PRT ensuring that upcoming projects are designed for future transit enhancements or better, building them into these projects? Yeah, I guess I'll open up and say that, I mean, we're starting to see uh, transit projects uh, on our tip and on our plan that are on state roads. I mean, where the collaboration is happening. Uh, Port Authority recently hired a corridor planner. So they've sort of, their focus now is more corridor based. And I think uh, with some of these projects like uh, State Rod 837, where the, the Port Authority is proposing, um, you know, transit uh, related improvements through uh, Homestead and Mun Hall and uh, places like that, uh, I think you're starting to see more and more of that collaboration happen. So it, it is happening and, and, and um, I think you're gonna start to see the fruits of that collaboration. I don't know, Dave, if you wanna add anything to that or Andy? Yeah, it's pretty, um, those projects are, have, have actually, those are the ones I was referring to that have actually moved on to the tip in the in the past few weeks thanks to help from PennDOT um and uh the that would be the the 837 project that's going to actually add that's going to get us our first transit signal priority in the region um that's an implementation project not a planning project so that's real stuff that this, that's going to be installed pedestrian improvements enhanced stations uh it's going to be basically going to turn 837 into a brt light uh it's, it's going to really dramatically improve transit time, uh, travel time on the 61C especially, which is the longest uh, time-wise, the longest route in, in Allegheny County. It takes over 90 minutes at its worst. Uh, so that'll be a big improvement for mobility in the Mon Valley. On the other side of the river, there's going to be a, a, a transit-oriented development uh, study that's federally funded uh, in Braddock, Swissvale, Rankin. It's kind of, kind of uh, uh, put down some of the... Uh, some of some of the that's more of a planning study, but that'll lay some of the groundwork for maybe extending the uh, Martin Luther King Jr. East Busway, uh, which has been a dream for a long time. Uh, so it's kind of put down some of the some of the pieces that could that could add up to that. And then the other piece that, that that's also uh, the other corridor that just went on to the tip that's been also federally funded with a discretionary grant is uh, uh, kind of is is called the corridor G. Uh, in the in the list, it's it's called the East Central Pittsburgh River to River Connection, and uh, they they describe that as going Strip District, Hill District, Oakland, Hazelwood, Carrick, and Overbrook, and uh, uh, the 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 I'm that they're kind of being a little mode neutral on that, and they're going to kind of let themselves look at some some unusual and maybe some innovative modes of transit, uh, uh, and and see what works there. Uh, it's a very difficult terrain, but uh, as you, as a lot of you know, you know you can't. It's really hard to go north, south in the city of Pittsburgh um, uh, through the through the the hills and the rivers. So this is going to try to take a crack at that. Uh, that'll be that'll be pretty exciting. The other big corridors on the on the next transit list uh, um, out into the future to the north, to the west, to the south. Um, going to take a, a a good hard look at the uh, at the uh, blue line and the silver line. And see what's the best use of that facility, uh, and and maybe even plan for light rail extensions. Uh, also, on the tip, on the new tip when it was adopted, went a major um, kind of a planning or procurement study, all of the specking and scoping work for uh, replacing all of the light rail trains. That is going to be a huge deal. Going to replace all of the light rail trains again. Going to Kind of, kind of lay the groundwork for future expansions because you don't want to do an expansion with, um, with about to wear out trains. Uh, so 
a major investment in trains is coming in this long range plans uh, horizon and uh, the down payment on getting that work started uh, is, is already made. Just, just to add to that too, I mean, Penn, um, I believe that PRT planners and as all transit agency planners are invited to uh, scoping field views and Penn, PennDOT connects meetings as well that are, are kicked off before um, um, the PE phase of, of any project gets started. Yeah, that's correct, Andy. I mean, we we have a, I think we have a great working relationship with the PRT, and we always, um, we always involve them in our scoping field views for our new projects, and try to make as as many accommodations as we can uh, with our projects. A lot, oftentimes, the PRT has has bus stops along the routes, and we're always looking for opportunities to to make those improvements and and any incorporate any work we can that that they need done uh, into into our projects as as we're as we come through the areas. So most definitely trying to work with them uh, to, to make enhancements where we can on our projects as well. Okay, and we have um, an additional question from Chris Sandvig. Uh, where does Smart Moves Connections factor into the project list? Well, I'll start off by saying, you know, Smart Moves Connections is a is a document we want to take from planning to implementation for sure. Uh, there are a number of hubs uh, that were identified in Smart Moves Connections. A number of strategies um, we've we've gotten started with uh, a study that we recently completed uh, for the Cranberry Hub, which we're working with the Butler County Commissioners, Cranberry Township and a uh, private developer on a potential transit hub uh, in Cranberry. Um, and uh, so we're, we're starting to, you know, pull apart that, that the Smart Moves Connections document and starting to get into what would it take to implement uh, some of the hubs that are in there, et cetera. Dave, I don't know if you, you want to chime in here on that one. I'll, um, um, first of all, I just want to note that, uh, uh, I mean, yeah, we, uh, uh, yeah, it's a, pre it's a pretty good document and, and go and have a look at the websites uh, for it. Um, I'll see if I can find those and put those in the chat too and explore the map, especially, uh, and, and see what that tells you. Uh, it's, you know, uh, it, it's it's definitely going to be up to the municipalities and counties to identify what kinds of hubs that they want. Uh, in the case of Cranberry, we had an in, an interest in in that, and we 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 took it, we took the Smart Moves connections to the table, and uh, uh, and and was able to help inform uh, what's come out of that. And the other piece that I think is going to be the uh, that's going to make some of these coordinations at hubs uh, happen is is going to be coordinating over over. Uh, uh, regional fare system, uh, and we're, we're we're in the research phase of that, and we're starting a research project very soon. That'll be um, uh, that'll research maybe get, getting all of our transit agencies to be able to share customers and share fares. That would be very exciting if we could do that, and that would make those uh, regional hubs uh, really really more possible. Okay, we have a question from Dave, not Dave Totten. Um, the strategy targets world class. For multimodal, especially biking and walking, who is the world class performer, perhaps a country, referenced for projects? Uh, I guess for the sake of argument, I'd like to turn that question around, you know, to, uh, and ask Dave uh, who, who he thinks the world class, uh, you know, country or performer is uh, you know I, I there's probably a, a a list of places that could be pointed to um, you know places in Europe places here in the United States uh, maybe Portland uh, you know I, I, it's, it's all arguable I'll even ask uh, if he's still on uh, Scott Bricker to comment on that you know I'm not I, I don't profess to be an expert at that who the world-class performers are. Yeah, 
Anybody else want to take a stab at that? I... Yeah, sure. Sorry. I was I was chatting, but I'm happy to weigh in. I mean, yeah, there's 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 individual cities globally doing amazing things, but in terms of nations, I would say Netherlands and Denmark high above just about everybody else and then Belgium, France, Spain, Germany. Um but yeah, I mean there's there's cities like Ljubljana in Slovenia that are doing amazing things. There's examples the world over. Um, but yeah, those those countries I'd say are probably the benchmarks. But also like, you know, yeah, along those lines, like Vancouver and Montreal in Canada are doing amazing things as well. So something closer to home we can we can look to as well in North America. Thank you, Scott. Okay, um, and we're going to come right back to Scott. <laughs> uh, comment from Scott Bricker. We only spend approximately 2% on bike and pedestrian, according to the pie chart that was in the uh, presentation, I assume. I learned recently that DVRPC, the Philly region's MPO, made a public commitment of spending 4.5% or 1.6 billion of their overall transportation funding on bike ped in their most recent long range plan. Our region should make a similar commitment to increase funding in terms of percentage of funding. 2% will not move the needle for these modes. I can, I can take that one. So Scott, that, that's a great comment. In, in the last long range plan, we actually did increase um, the set aside for our uh, livability through smart transportation program. We we actually doubled it in our last uh, in our last long range plan. Um, right now, just as it stands in in the current plan, in stages two and three, we have about eight hundred and fifty million dollars set aside um, for those types of improvements. To, you know your 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 multimodal. Um, you know, non highway bridge type uh, improvements, and, and since then. Um, as, as Ryan, I think mentioned earlier, we've gotten, um, we've doubled our TA allocation, uh, through the IIJ. We went through, went from about actually over doubled. We went from about Ryan, correct me if I'm, my numbers are off here for, but, uh, about 1.8 million a year to about 4.4 million a year. Um, so that those will definitely help to, to bring those numbers up. Um, so just, you know, and, and I believe the pie chart that you're referring to was, was the tip investment. So that wasn't the last long range plan. That's, that's just the current tip. So yeah, we, we plan on, um, and looking at that again, when we start to, to break down our buckets of funding, um, you know, as I said, we did it last time we went, um, we, we doubled our livability through smart transportation program. Uh, if you you recall previously, it was about 1.5 million a year. Right now, we're allocating 3 million a year to it. Um, you know, and and with in in discussions, um, you know, with the work groups, with our counties, with our members, and and PRT and others, and and through forums as of these, you know, we can even potentially look to to increase that going forward as a as a policy to help to. Um, you know, to bolster the funding for for those non traditional, well, not non traditional, but non highway bridge uh, modes of of transportation, biking, walking, um, things like that. So, yeah, we hear you loud and clear. Thanks, and sorry for misreading the uh, the pie chart. I yeah. didn't realize that was the tip, actually. But along those lines, showing those changes, I think it would be really helpful for people in the region to see like how we're adjusting with the times um, to address various various issues, whether it's resiliency and sustainability, air quality, a multimodal future, whatever that is, I think it's important for people to see what it was, what the goal is, and where we are today with the tips. Yep, great comment. We, uh, and definitely we, we will we'll be looking to, to do that. And, and also I, I do wanna mention that there is, there are two new, um, federal programs that came out of the IIJ. One is the carbon reduction program, which will provide additional funding for those types of, of projects and initiatives. And then there's a, um, 
we're not we're not sure what our allocations of that will be yet. Where we there there is some preliminary guidance out from USDOT on the use of those funds. However, we haven't received what um, what our allocations from the state apportionments will be of those funds. And then, secondly, there's a protect program that's centered around sustainability and resiliency. And again, we're still waiting for for gov, uh, guidance from from USDOT on that one as well. So those will both of those will help help these types of initiatives. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Bricker. Uh, we have a comment here from William Hame, who says, "I appreciate the rundown of how all these funding mechanisms and project prioritizations are made." Sounds like there are some really exciting projects on the near term horizon. One thing that I always hope for is that even if projects are not specifically bike or pedestrian or transit oriented, that they take complete streets and big picture interconnectedness into consideration. I feel like the Route 2230 bridge over 376 is a classic example that I brought up at SPC meetings in the past. Okay. I I think this is a really good comment as well. Um, you know, I think you're going to hear from us very soon on, com on a complete streets. We are working on a draft complete streets policy, working with our, our commissioners and our, and our policy committee. Um, uh, you know, we, we get it. Uh, we need, you know, I, th and I also think you're going to hear uh from PennDOT on, on this as well in terms of their how they're adjusting their design manual uh and so forth so um yeah i mean we need to we need to design improvements for all users um and especially vulnerable users and um we hear you loud and clear that's a that's a very good comment but i think you're going to hear from spc in the coming months with regard to complete streets That's all we have for the questions. Um, is there anybody else that wants to unmute themselves and ask a question? I wanted to also uh, give an opportunity for Ann O'Gork or um, Steve Shanley to uh, make any any comments from Alle Allegheny County folks. I don't think this is Anna Gork. I don't think I have any comments. I'm just glad everyone uh, joined tonight and was very thoughtful with listening and providing comment. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, Don, thanks. I don't have anything either. Uh, okay. Appreciate everybody working together. So uh, yep. great group. Uh, great to work with everybody. Thanks. I appreciate those thoughts, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Ann. Again, the floor is open before we close it. <laughs> Hearing none, I just want to thank everybody for participating this evening. Um, we're going to go back to work on this long range plan. You'll, you'll, uh, we'll, we'll set something up for, I guess, um, springtime late spring you know april time frame probably april may time frame where and we'll continue to work with our partners at the county uh, at the transit agencies at pendot to uh, sort of refine the project lists for this plan and, uh, and we'll bring it back to you at that time before we before we adopt it and we'll give we'll have a, another opportunity for more, probably more detailed feedback on, on the plan itself. So just thank you everybody for participating. Hope everyone enjoys the rest of their evening.